Come on, church, let's sing it again. Tell him, thank you, Lord. Come on. You got a lot to be thankful for. Some of you could be in jail. Some of you could be in prison. Some of you could be in a hospital right now. You got something to give God a hand clap and a shout of praise for. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to thank you, Lord. Sing it again. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Sing, thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He blessed me once. I just want to thank you, Lord. What did he do? He blessed me. And he blessed me. Come on, tell him. He blessed me more than once. Twice. But what happens? Every time. Every time. Come on, tell him. Every time I think about your grace, be blessing me.
give God a hand clap and a shout of praise. Come on. Come on. Give the King of kings and the Lord of lords something to come into this place. Come on. Give him a hand clap and a shout. Somebody needs to shout. Somebody needs to shout. Somebody needs to say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, Harry. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Don't stop. Don't stop. Your miracle is as close as a shout and a praise away. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you today. We're giving a shout of praise. Oh, God, I thank you today. I thank you today. Come on, just close your eyes and lift up your hand. God, I thank you today. God, I thank you that I'm here. God, I thank you I'm alive. God, I thank you that I am well. God, I thank you that I'm blessed. I thank you that my home's blessed. God, I thank you that I'm an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I want you to think about what you have to be thankful for today. Not the garbage you came from, but where God is taking you, his glory and his presence. God, I thank you today for the school I go to. I thank you for the job that I have. I thank you for the spouse that I have. God, I thank you. You've laid up treasures in heaven and to you be all the praise and the glory in Jesus name I wish somebody would get fired up in here today Woo! man look at your neighbor and say God is good oh good good God hallelujah you may be seated in the presence of the Lord just keep playing softly Rick Oh, God, I thank you. We want to welcome those that are watching live. We want to encourage you today, right now, tell your friends and family, share this feed. If there was ever a sermon, if there was ever a sermon, that if you know somebody going through some stuff, you got somebody you know, maybe you've been beat up, you've been busted up, maybe you feel like the devil has teed off on you like a pinata on Cinco de Mayo. You know what I'm talking about. Today is your day. Amen. Did they not do a great job worshiping during the first half of the worship set? Give our children's ministry a hand. Yeah, leave. Man. I told our band today, I said, listen, I ain't fired up. I don't know what. I, I read the Bible and it got me all fired up. I don't know what's going on. But um, today, as we get ready to worship with our giving, and if you're online watching, you worship God with your giving. This is your church. You watch us faithfully. Text to give. It's on the screen right behind us. It'll be on your screen on your computer or your phone. You can, in this room, text to give. Let me tell you what, God is doing something amazing in this church. God is doing something amazing in people's lives. And as we get ready to give, sow that seed, sow that seed tithe, 10%. Learn to do this. If it's 5%, if it's 1% at a time, become a steady, faithful giver and watch and see God begin to move things out of your way. Let me tell you, if you have money problems, give to God and give him your problem. Amen? Because guess what? It won't be your problem anymore. It'll be God's problem. God, I have a lack in my life and I don't want a lack in my life anymore. Here you go. Amen? How many of you would love to make God to bless you with more finances? Come on now. This is not an option and it is not a debt. It is a command of God. When we give, he will give back to us. The Bible says he will press it down. Can you imagine the bank calling you and they're like, man, we don't know what's going on, but your checking account, it's not bouncing. It's blessed. Your bank account isn't bouncing. It's blessed. It's as if somebody has pushed those money down they keep pouring it back on and it's running over. See, God does not want a church that's in lack. God wants a church that is fulfilling and walking and striding in his path. Amen. And when we begin to give, we begin to sow, we begin to do these things. Let me tell you, we can break the spirit of poverty. You can break the spirit of stinginess. This church will not be able to contain the people when we give to God. Today as you sow, you have a lack, you have a need in your life. We believe God to meet that need. And it's not a debt. 
but it is a seed we sow. And with that seed, we know you are going to grow. You are going to go and you are going to give for everything that you have. And God is going to bless your harvest. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we thank you today. Honestly, we thank you for the opportunity we have to sow a seed into your kingdom. God, we thank you that you are amazing. And God, you love us so much that you gave us your only son to die for us. You gave us your best. Now today, God, the blood, the sweat, the tears, the time clock we punch, we're saying we give it to you, God. And I thank you to bless this offering today. I thank you to bless online givers, in, in, in the auditorium givers. Lord, I thank you today. Remove that stinginess. Remove I need, I need. But God, how can we serve you? How can we sow to you? Lord, we thank you for this in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. God bless. Sing it again, Rick. I got to go put my jacket on. Thank you. the Lord another hand clap of praise today. Come on now. God is amazing. I'm telling you, um, I'm going to position my cup so you can see the branding there. That's what I'm all about. Um, man, don't I look totally different with the jacket on? My suit coat. I had to get my holy robe on. Holy robe. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, will you go to the back and grab those glasses? Oh, yeah. Uh, today, I'm preaching without my glasses because I, my wife left them at home. So <laughs> she says every Sunday, do you have everything? And I'm like, iPad, check. iPhone, check. Wallet, check. Keys, check. Bible, check. I got everything except for my glasses. So today, um, God bless Sister Paula because I'm wearing Paula glasses. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to look good. And if I put these on and I sound grumpy today, is she in here? We can talk about her. She ain't in here. Um, we can blame it on the glasses. At first, I had some purple ones. And she said, I've got some black ones in there. I'm like, well, I do like black. So we got a little, it looks like a little zebra leopard print going on today for the glory of God. You're in the jungle. Look at you and say, you're in the jungle, baby. Man, I'm telling you. I uh, was praying. If you have your Bibles, go to Acts 16. Go to Acts 16. Acts 1 6. I was praying about the sermon, and 
Let me just see by the show of hands, how many have ever done something, maybe a job, or you've done, I don't know, uh, maybe a project, and you've been uninspired? Raise your hand today. Come on, raise your hand. Maybe, yes, maybe you're in a marriage and you're uninspired. We're going to pray for you at the end of service. So I uh, was getting ready for the sermon, and I know, I know you guys think I'm a, I'm a professional, and I am amazing, and I agree with all of those things, <laughs> but every now and again... Have anybody ever prayed and you feel like your prayers barely got past your nose? Yeah, Yeah, come on somebody. We're going to be, oh, we got to be raw and real today. I mean, get in it dirty, dirty, dirty. We're going to get raw and real. And so, in a Christian way, so don't get all nervous. All right, so I um, was praying and, oh my God, I want something new and fresh. Not that I don't grab nuggets from Heaven's Gates every single Sunday, but I do. But some Sundays, they are borrowed from other people and I'm inspired by them. And we call that the anointing via Ed Young helped me, or uh, whoever helped me, I'm like, yes, Stephen Furtick, thank you. Last Sunday, I got my illustration, literally Sunday morning, I was, I'm like, turned on Jensen Franklin, and I'm like, oh, that's exactly the, sur- that is exactly what I needed. I didn't have a story. I didn't have an illustration, and so, boom, there you go. And so, this week, oh, yes, Lord. This week, hey, I dare you guys not to touch it. Don't touch it. Just put your hands in your pockets. All right, so this week I'm praying, and I'm like, God, I want a fresh word. Anybody ever want something fresh from God? Come on, somebody. You ever want something fresh? You want something you haven't thought of yet? You want something that nobody's thought of yet? And I think, man, everybody's preached the Bible. I've preached the Bible, Genesis to maps. I've preached it all. I've done it all, God. What what more is there? And then God has a way of just blowing our minds. Amen? And so I was like, God, I, I need something. So I go over to Corinthians. I go over to Corinthians. And man, I'm like, I, it, because I can't read very well, because I'd never remember my glasses, so I listened to the Bible on audio. And it was this guy with a British accent. Oh, it sounded so smart. He read it, and I felt smarter. I felt like I was in Bible college. I was learning the thuses and the thous. And I was listening to the King James Version to get really something fresh. You want to go as old school as you can. You know what I'm talking about. So I was in the KJV listening to this guy with a, it was an American guy with a British accent. So it sounded a little phony, but it was cheap. Okay, it was a free app. So I'm listening to this, and I'm like, yeah, that's good. That's, that's horrible, God. First Corinthians, I was reading over in there and listening to it, and it was about how bad the church was and the affairs and the sexual addiction and all of that. And I thought, well, crud, I can't preach that to my church today. You imagine walking up here, you're all a bunch of trash, and you all need to get saved. I wish I'd never baptized any of you, let alone the leader that baptized all of you. Can you imagine that sermon on a Sunday morning? If I ever go to First Corinthians, just know, get, get to the altar real quick so I don't have to. So... I listened to some more. I listened to some more, and I'm listening about circumcision before an evangelistic trip. And I'm like, I'm not preaching about that. How can we get inspired about circumcising a 30-year-old man? So I'm not going to. It's in the Bible, so if you're offended, take it out of, take it with God. So I'm like, God, I have nothing. I go over to Romans. I want to listen to Romans, and there's nothing in Romans. I'm like, ah, there's a bunch of rules. We don't want to talk about rules today, do we? No. And then, if all else fails. Go to the book of Acts. Can I get an amen from somebody in the choir today? Choir, we got a choir over there. Let me tell you something about the book of Acts. It is the book of action, all right? There we go. That's back in my children's church days. It's the book of action. So, I'm listening to the Bible. And something happened. Something happened. And I got inspired by the word of God. Let me tell you something. We give up so close so many times of giving up on what God wants to say, but God wants us to say something. Finally, I had my iPad beside my face, and I'm like, I will go through every chapter of the Bible, God, if you're going to make me. But I have to preach something with Paul in it. So there we go, because it would ruin our whole series. So I said, God, what do you want? And I'm here today to tell you, God wants you to get what you want from him. God wants you to know that you are part of something that is larger than you. It is larger than life. It is eternity. God has a mission. He has a co-mission. He has something for every single one of us if we would just simply listen to him. I need some amens on this side of the room today. I'll give you all a dollar. Say amen. Do it. Thank you. I'm going to get an amen sign up here like they do on TV shows. Applause because I need those today. Acts chapter number 16. Let's go there with Sister Paula's glasses. 
I'm going to preach with a cranky anointing today. <laughs> Acts chapter 16, verse number 25. Now, before we get there, I'm going to do this. Paul is on a missionary trip. And on his missionary trip, he has been given a command. Many of us have heard of the Macedonian call. The Macedonian call, God called him and said, gave him a vision and said, listen, there's somewhere you need to go. There's something you need to do. You need to get, and he saw a man in a vision praying for revival. God will see you if he sees you praying for revival. God will see you when he sees you hungry for him. And so God showed Paul this, and, and Paul was moved, and he said, we got to go. So they're on their way, and they're, they're, doing the, they're doing the missionary plan. They're on the road trip, and they're, they're having a great time in the Lord, fellowshipping. And then all of a sudden, he's in a town that this woman is a, is a witch, is basically what she is, witchcraft. And she's in this city, and every day, she drives him crazy. He's trying to do the work of the Lord. He's trying to do the work of the Lord in Philippi. And he's trying to preach. And this woman is constantly like a gnat buzzing in his ear. Every time he goes to do something for God, she's right there trying to disrupt what she's doing. You ever notice when you start doing something for God, how the devil will try to disrupt and get in your ear? You need to kick his rear and say, get on back and get out of here. Amen? Amen. So he's there doing the work of the Lord. He's preaching. And all of a sudden, he gets so sick of it. He says, in the name of Jesus, come out. Lays hands on the woman, and she is completely delivered and set free. That's a powerful thing. I ought to preach about that today, but I'm not. He prays for her, lays hands on her. She gets delivered. You see, let me tell you something this morning. The moment you start doing something for God, you're going to stir some things up, and they're not going to like it. You start doing something for God, in your life, some flesh is not going to like it, and some flesh is going to get irritated and mad. But it's time we speak the word of God, speak in Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name, I rebuke fear, I rebuke anxiety, I rebuke depression, I've got the mind of Christ, I am who I am by the blood of the Lamb. Can I get anybody to do this today? Come on. Do not come to me with a problem that God cannot fix when we simply just give it to God. So he prays for cast the devil out of her, and somebody got mad. The owner of this woman got mad because this was the source of which his income came. And he, she cannot read, she can't read uh, palms anymore. She can't read tarot cards anymore. You've ruined my business. You've ruined my livelihood. And they go, the mob goes, and they tell the, they tell the, the, the centurions, they say, listen, go take these guys and beat them and throw them in prison. Paul and Silas, they're doing the work of the Lord here. And all of a sudden, they rip their robes off. They take rods out and begin to beat them until they are nearly dead. They're simply just doing the work of the Lord. We hear this story. We're picking this up now. They've been beaten and they've been thrown into prison. They've been beaten. They've been thrown into prison. Acts chapter 16, verse number 25. They're in prison. They don't know what the outcome is going to be. The city's in an uproar. They've cast the devil out of this crazy woman. And all of a sudden, at midnight, everybody say verse number 25, about midnight. Say about midnight. about midnight. You see, our seasons need to change in your life. And I know this may be deep for some people today, but if you're in a season where it's constant, beat down, beat down, beat down, beat down, beat down, bruised up, thrown out, and you feel like you're never going to get over the top. Let me tell you, and I'm not just talking about finances, but maybe you're, you're like, God, I'm going to change the way I'm going to diet. I'm going to change the way I'm going to eat. I'm going to change the way I'm going to uh, pray. I'm going to change the way I serve. I want to do these things, but every time it feels like the devil's taking a rod out and knocking me in the back of the head. It's time for you to get to ready, getting to realize that your season is about to change if you will just simply begin to worship God. Why do I believe in what? Yeah, come on. You see, midnight represents the dawning of a new day. No, it may not be dead by, or daylight yet, but at midnight, something begins to change. Dates begin to change. Chimes begin to change. And in our lives, we need to realize at the midnight hour, it's not when it's the darkest before the dawn. But at the midnight time is when things are getting ready to change. It's so important for us to come into this house on a Sunday morning worshiping God, lifting up your name, lifting up his name, speaking forth things out of your mouth. It's one thing to sit there in a holy grunt and look at the words go by on the screen and say, I got it in my head. You need to get it from your head into your heart because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Can I get an amen for that? That's good. That's good. I'm going to just clap for me. Oh, I'm having me church today. So about midnight, ever say about midnight. About midnight, Paul and Silas were crying and they were begging God, what have we done wrong? Why have you done this to us? Why are we in prison? Why are we nearly beaten to death and bloody? 
and torn up. God, why? And they began to do that, didn't they? Is that what the Bible says? No. Okay, I'm going to help you. No. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and doing what? Singing. We used to sing a song called, I Got a Feeling Everything's Going to Be All Right. Anybody ever heard that song in here? It goes like this. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh, I got a feeling. And it's like one of those churchy, 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 churchy songs. Oh, I. And it's awesome. You want to do a Holy Ghost Jericho march. They begin to sing, I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Paul and Silas looking at each other in a bloody pulp. You've all heard this story. This is not my sermon. This is the introduction. So they're in a bloody pulp. They have been beaten wrongly for casting a devil out of a woman that was driving Paul nuts. What if we got so sick of the things we're fighting between our ears and we said enough was enough. I'm beating you up for a change and taking my life back. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do you do that, Pastor? You begin to pray and you begin to sing and some walls and chains are going to begin to fall. You're praying and believing God for something. Are you praying? Are you whining before the throne of grace? God is looking for some people that will lift a loud voice and give a loud shout and say, God, I thank you. This is the day that you have made. You have not made junk, but I am more than an overcomer through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Hallelujah. We got to get to this sermon. It'll be 130. Look at your neighbor and say, your season's about to change. Look at your other neighbor and say, it's midnight, baby. They say nothing good happens after midnight, but when you're serving God, the party gets cranked up at midnight. Amen? Hallelujah. Woo! God, I'm going to listen to this again when I get home. So, in the prison, now listen to this. They were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners, everybody say the prisoners. Who were the prisoners? Somebody tell me what a prisoner is. Please, tell me. Okay, you know what a prisoner is. Okay. They're captive? They're criminals. Okay, that's what they are. They're criminals. Now, half you in this room has been in jail or know somebody that has been in jail. The other half of you in this room should probably be in jail or you know somebody that should be in jail. Amen? Amen. That was good. That'll, that'll get you about 1.30 today. So, Paul and Silas are innocent. They've not been tried. Not been tried. They've not even really been accused of anything but performing a miracle in the name of Jesus. That's what happened. This guy's business got destroyed. What if the church began to speak to mountains and began to speak to things? that Strongholds and bondages around you that are fighting. Let me tell you, if you got somebody at work that is driving you crazy, you need to do this. Begin to sing and praise the Lord for them. Amen? You want to change the situation? Stop complaining about it. Stop being a prisoner. Stop being held captive by this. But no, there may be bars behind you, but Jesus has set you free. So Paul and Silas, they're singing and praying. It did not say the other, other players in this story were singing and praying. It says they were doing what? Come on, say that again. We got one person in this church. Amy's going to get the scholar dollar of the day. Say they were listening. People are listening to you when you leave this room. You tell them you go to go church. You tell them you're a Christian. You are representing the priesthood and the glory and the presence of God himself. What a responsibility. And if you have that responsibility, God has already equipped you to handle that. Amen? So Paul and Silas are in the prison. They're locked up, they're beat up, they're stripped down, their clothes are ripped, and they're singing. And the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, there was an earthquake, not because of fracking, but by the glory of God. Come on, somebody. There was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaking. God, I could preach. This is not even my sermon. It's time to shake some foundations though, isn't it? It's time for you to go home today and turn things upside down. 
I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. No, do it now. This is the day. This is the time. This is the hour. Enough's enough. The change is coming in me. It's going to be evident through me, through Jesus. So they began to pray. They were in the inner prison. And then all of a sudden, the earth began to quake. It began to shake. And something amazing happened. This is how great. When God's people get free, everybody around God's people get free. You see, we come to church every Sunday, and we think we come to church, we're holy, we're righteous, and we are walking around with bondages that are probably greater than those in the world. And we wonder, why is everything so junk and garbage around me? What kind of garbage are you carrying? What kind of chain are you carrying? What kind of worry? What kind of complaining? What kind of negativity are you carrying with you? With we as Christians begin to believe and stand on the word of God, let me tell you, those people that are captive around us will be free as well. Amen? Amen. So here we go. And the prison was shaken to the foundation, and immediately, 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 all the doors were opened, and everyone, everybody say everyone, everyone's bonds were unfastened. Now I'm going to have to hurry to get through this. But when the jailer woke and he saw that the prison doors were open, he drew a sword and he was about to kill himself. Suppose that the prisoners escaped. He assumed. Assumption is the lowest form of knowledge. Don't assume anything in your life until Jesus says it is finished and it is over and you're pushing daisies. Is it over? God has a chance for you. God has faith for you. Amen? All right, let's go. But Paul cried with a loud voice, don't harm yourself. For we are all still here. And the jailer called for the lights and rushed in. And he trembled with fear. He fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? He just saw the power of God. He saw the reflection of what God is. And God is our salvation. This is what happens. Paul and Silas praying, earthquake shaking. Man, I tell you what, I, I cannot wait until the day that our neighborhoods begin to tremble, that our schools begin to tremble, that our homes begin to tremble. And people come in here and they go, you know what, I don't know what happened, but there's a shaking going on in my spirit. There's a shaking going on in my life. There's some vision going on. I didn't know. There was division, but God now is putting things back together. I, I don't know what has happened, but my finances, there's a shaking going on. There's a quaking going on. There's a hunger for God like never before. I'm going to tell you what, when you begin to lift up a voice and you begin to pray, things around you, we have a ripple effect. When we begin to speak God's word, it's not just God's will for us and our house to be saved. It is God's will for our cities to be saved, our cities to feel the glory of God, our cities to be blessed, our cities to be filled with love. Can you imagine jails have to shut down because there is no more crime because God is setting the captives free? Come on. Oh, pastor, that'll never happen. It will never happen to you. But I believe that God is amazing and can send his love through us to every corner of this city, state, nation, and world. If we will just simply stop listening, stop speaking negativity, and start singing praises and giving God glory. Amen? Amen. So Paul and Silas, they're in the prison. Remember this. Remember this. They're in prison. Beaten up, bloodied. They're in prison. All of a sudden, prayer, boom. Prayer happens. Doors go open. Guard comes in. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Can you imagine that's on your watch? All of a sudden, you're working the county jail, and every single door opens up. Oh, God. Get the lights. Somebody get the lights. Grab out your sword, and he's getting ready to dive on his sword. Because under his watch, things have just gone south in a hurry. He doesn't know how, but all he can remember is there were two guys over there, beaten up, bloodied, bound, in jail, and they begin to praise. That's the only thing that changed in that prison. You hear me this morning. The only thing that changed, what happened? He's like, it wasn't no Bob over there. Uh, he's doing nothing but cussing. He's complaining that he's innocent. Oh, it wasn't this guy over here. He's bound. I know he did it wrong. But something happened when praise entered the prison. Something changed the atmosphere when God's word came into the prison. And all of a sudden, he says, the only thing I know that happened was these two guys came in and everything has started to shake. These people came in and something has begun to happen. And the Bible says it opened up. The doors opened up and he was getting ready to jump on the sword. And Paul said, whoa. Everybody take a breath here real quick, all right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Nobody's going to die today, all right? He says, man, listen, we're all here. Now, isn't that crazy? This story's getting ready to get cray-cray. I've never been to jail. But if I were to ever go to jail, I'll have to be put in a padded cell. Because I don't have my iPhone on me for five minutes. I don't know what I'll do. I don't know what I'll do. Those birds will get angrier than they ever get if I have away from that phone. Y'all think this is a glass top. I'm playing Angry Birds underneath here when I move my Bible. You know what I'm saying? And so, and the way I like to move around, oh my Lord, I, I, I have a hard time sitting in a movie or sitting in what? I just, oh Lord, there's so much for me to be doing, like with my feet moving. It's a miracle I don't weigh 180 pounds, but I make up for it in consumption, so I'm working on that. But Paul and Silas are over here, they're in jail. All of a sudden, they're free. The, the guard's going to kill himself. And Paul says, wait. I'll tell you what I'd be doing. I would be running out of that jail. Doors open up. I'm stir crazy. I'm running around circles like a little, little, a little mouse in a cage. Running around like this. Like a little hamster on a wheel. Like that. And all of a sudden, the doors open up. I'm outie. Oh, my prayers did it. What up, God? Hey, hey. See, you wouldn't want to be it. That's exactly what I'm doing. You know what? Paul and Silas weren't there just to set themselves free. No, oh, I got to say that again. I got to say that again. Oh, God, I need a miracle. I need a healing. God, I need more finances. I need you to open up the heavens. God, I need this in my marriage. God, I need this for my kids. God, I need, I need, I need, I need. It wasn't about you. It wasn't about Paul and Silas. God wanted to do something greater. When we realize and we start praying greater than our need, let me tell you, when you start sowing greater than your need, you're going to begin to see God do some ripple effect miracles. And you're just a seed on God's big, beautiful, green orchard of blessings. Amen? We're like this as a church, aren't we? I got my blessing. I'm going home. See y'all later. Woo I got what I needed. And that's exactly what we do. That's exactly how we pray. Well, why doesn't God do anything for me? When is the last time you prayed for someone else before you prayed for me? When is the last time you sowed a seed for someone else other than yourself? When is the last time you volunteered not to be seen by pastor or not to be seen by leadership? You just did it unto the Lord. Come on, somebody. That's good. That's good. So he says, don't jump on that sword. Don't jump on that sword. Ain't no one dying here today. This is what happens, and I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to paraphrase. Read, read these next few verses. He goes, the guard says, I want to be saved. He says, I want to be saved, and I want my family to be saved. I want come to my house. They are still under custody, under arrest of the prison. And the guard, all the doors are open, no prisoners going crazy. That's a miracle. He says, come on, come to my house. Come to my house. I, 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 I want you to pray for my family. The Bible says that Paul and Silas left the prison. Everybody say they left the prison. They left the prison. This is crazy. They left the prison. Go baptized mm, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Boom, you're saved. Baptize him, his kids, his wife. They all get saved. And then the, the, the jailer says, let's eat. Let's have a meal. They eat. Paul and Silas are free. And they go back to prison. They said, Paul's like, sorry, great meal, great time. We're going back to prison. We ain't been done right in this place. We're going to get done right. They go back to prison. I read this and I'm like, why? Why? Go to verse number 25. No, 35. Thank you, Paula, for your glasses. Mm. Okay, they brought them up, verse number 34, set food before them. But when it was daytime, the magistrates sent the police saying, now listen to this. They're back in jail. They go back. He says, let the men go. Now they're back in jail. 
And they just set them free. They said, let Paul and Silas go. I hope somebody's getting ready to get this story because it's not about anything we've read up until now. God has something greater than what you're even believing God for if you will just simply get into his place of worship. We will get into his place of listening to his word, reading his word. And so the magistrates came and they said, uh, we've made a mistake. Let, let the prisoners go. And the jailer reported this words to Paul saying, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Therefore, come out now and go in peace. They're free. The party begins. The end of the chapter. Psh, it's over. Hallelujah. But Paul says, not so fast. Not so fast. We're going to stay in jail. What kind of crazy guy is Paul? I read this. I listened to the guy in the British American accent. But Paul says no. What? That's a, he ain't reading the Bible right. Paul got out and he, he went and evangelized. Paul was in Philippi. Everybody say Philippi. It's going to be very important, very important in a moment. Paul was in Philippi when this happened. Paul was in Philippi and Paul was a Roman citizen. And Paul's about to get ticked off. You see, when's the last time something happened to you? Instead of you blaming, cursing, granky at God, why do all these bad things happen? Why, do, why does God let this? Oh my God, shut up for one minute. And why don't you realize who you are in Christ? And you don't have to take it anymore. And I think we're fighting the wrong person. We're not to fight our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. But there is a devil in hell that we need to tell him to get back under our feet. Because he's gone too far. Can I get an amen? You see, we as a church have got something that we don't use. It's called authority. Somebody say authority. We use that authority. In the name of Jesus, something begins to happen. Favor begins to happen. So Paul and Silas are free. Come on, guys. Y'all get on out of jail. Go, please. Go in peace. Go. Shh. Go. Shh. Keep quiet. Come on. Come on. Paul says, mm -mm. I'm going to stay in jail. I'm going to stay here. This is crazy. Verse number 37. Paul said to them, are you ready? Satan had me bound, but Jesus set me free. Satan had me bound, but Jesus, he began to pray. He began, he began to sing again. He began to go, I can't hear you. No, I can't. I hear Jesus. Yes, I can. I hear Jesus. Yes, I can. You're a liar. You're going to do something different. Amen. Mm. His prayer. You see, once you've gone to the place of prayer, and your prayer is nothing more than this. It's not your whining. It is only quoting scripture back to God. What is prayer? What is your prayer life? It is claiming God's word that he said. You don't have any words that mean anything to God but his word. I want to tell you that right now. There's nothing you can threaten God with. Because he can just go, there you go. Take that. I'm tired of it. There you go. May all your hair fall out in, in my name. Boom, go. I mean, really, you think about God could really do anything. May cracks grow on the bottom of your feet and every step is hurting and painful, all right? That's what God can do. He can do anything he wants, but he won't because of grace. We quote the scriptures, though, and we stand on the word of God. Something begins to happen. Chains begin to fall off and they don't have a choice because we're speaking the creative power and the word of God, the creator of the universe. And there is something powerful when we do that backed with the name of Jesus because every demon begins to tremble. And when we do that with the power of the Holy Spirit, something has to move. It cannot stay in our way any longer. And Paul said, we We've been done wrong. Hold up a minute. Let me tell you what you're going to do now. What if we woke up tomorrow and we said, you know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. The devil has fought my family and my kids are on a highway to hell. Hold up. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Something's got to change here. Well, I'll, try, I'll just love them. I'm going to love them, but begin to speak God's word over their lives. And I ain't accepting this anymore. I ain't accepting my life anymore like this. I ain't accepting my finances like this. I'm not accepting my growth in God like this anymore. Something's getting ready to change. Amen? Paul said to them, they've beaten us publicly. They've embarrassed us. Now, who likes to get embarrassed? Nobody. Uncondemned men who are... Read me those two, two words, please. 
Mm-mm. They stepped in a big pile of poo when they did that. Because this is what happened. Paul knew who he was and what his rights were. Paul said, they have beaten us. We could walk out of town right now in the cover of darkness like you want us to. But you beat us. You threw us in prison. And the Philippians had a rule called a law, two laws. They could not beat a Roman citizen with a rod. And they could not throw them in their prisons. And so the magistrate knew his head was on a chopping block. You see, when you know who you are in Christ... And you walk around, maybe you're a little arrogant. Ooh, no, you got your head, you're a little prideful. No, I'm a believer in Jesus, and there are some things I'm just not accepting. There are some things and some ways of living, some, I'm not accepting this anymore as normal. I'm not accepting my family life like this anymore. This isn't normal at all. I am standing on God's word, and God's word does not make chaos. I'm standing on God's word. God's word brings conviction, compassion, understanding, knowledge. This is what I believe. And Paul said, I am a Roman citizen. And you broke the law, Jack. When every time Satan comes against us, he is coming against the blood of Jesus. Those of us that are believers in Christ, every single time he crosses that bloodline. I'm going to tell you what, he ought to pull back a nub. We ought to speak the word of God with authority and power and how dare him touch what God has ordained and stamped as blessed. Amen? So, they've beaten us publicly, uncondemned men who are Roman citizens. And they threw us into prison. And they did not know. Or, and, they, and do they now throw us out secretly? No. He says, let them come down here. Let them come down here, and may they escort us out of town. May they bring us in front of the people, not as criminals, but people that are free. And we will not leave this prison. They have broken the law. They have broken the command. They have broken what our Roman government says, and we are citizens of Rome May they come down here. And they said, no, please, just go out quietly. You know what the devil wants us to do? Go out quietly. A few years ago, they told me in one day I had cancer in my esophagus and stomach, and a result came back on blood that looked like I had cancer in my liver. Those are not two good things you want to get in one day. And we were literally on the verge of moving to Omaha, Nebraska to pastor a church. And the day I got those results, I said, listen, get this stuff checked out. Called the doctor, I said, get this checked out. But I'm not going out like this. I haven't even started yet. And I'm already defeated, dead, given up, stay home, cry. And I got off the phone and I told my wife, I said, let me tell you something right now. And we were, we were like, it was just a shock. What in the world's happened? I had horrible, horrible indigestion. I could not get rid of it. My stomach was just constantly, constantly in pain. I couldn't drink water without having acid reflux. It was awful. And I said, let me tell you what, this is how it's going to be. If I'm going out, I'm going to go out with a microphone in one hand and a Bible in the other standing behind a pulpit because I'm dictating my life. Rick, come on up, brother. Let me tell you, too many times we settle for the status quo of life. We settle for mediocrity, and we want to blame the rich, the powerful, the politicians. No, you are an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. The blame game stops now, and we live a life filled with God. What city did I tell you this happened in? Philippi. Go over to Philippians chapter number 3, verse number 20. I'm telling you. We have something if we will just tap into it. Philippians chapter number 3, verse number 20. A scripture we probably all read and have all passed over. But the power of citizenship is amazing if we will stand on God's word. Philippians chapter number 3, verse number 20. What does it say? But our citizenship, 
Everybody say citizenship. You see, what was Paul mad about? They touched a Roman citizen. They're supposed to send him back to Rome to get tried. This is not how it happens. You see, how it happens is this. One day, the Bible says that every knee would bow and every tongue would confess. One day, it's going to happen. We're going to be in heaven. And one day, Satan and his hordes of hell are going to come and they're going to stand before God. And God is going to say, curse you to outer darkness forever. This is how the story ends. We don't end in a heap crying. We don't end in a heap crying. We don't end, oh, I'm so broken down. Oh, I'm so hurt. Oh, I lived with bitterness my whole life. Oh, I lived with discouragement. Oh, I lived with depression. I just can't get past it. Oh, I lived with obesity and lust. I lived with all these things. No, we walk upright as citizens of heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Come on. Today our lives can be forever changed if we simply know who we are. Everybody stand to your feet this morning. Jesus, we thank you. Those that are watching or you'll go back and watch this. Stand on God's word. Believe that he died for you. Confess him as Lord and Savior. And I believe God will forever change your lives. There's nothing in, 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 in hell that we should want. Let me tell you, I, I want to ask for us to consistently pray for the church. Consistently speak good over our church. Consistently come in attendance. We have some, I'll see you every three or four weeks. Man, we don't want to do that. We gotta get we gotta get some momentum in our life. We gotta get the rhythm in our life. We're getting ready. Two weeks, Vision Sunday. This fall is so massive that we are gonna have to make a Sunday just to tell you what all our vision is for this this fall. Let me tell you what, it's time for you to get vision in your life beyond, well, I just gotta get through. If I can just get to this. No, God has this. God has his expanse, his word, ready for us. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're watching on Facebook Live or YouTube, if you have a prayer request, write it in the comments or text us, call us. There'll be a phone number at the end when we go off. There'll be, there'll be a thing you can call if you need prayer. But we love you. How many today you say, Pastor, there's some things in my life I need to be set free of. I want you to lift up your hand right now. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I've been in church, but I know God's got greater things than this. God, I thank you today. Lord, we thank you today. Jesus, we thank you. How many in here in this room, if there's... You say you never accepted Jesus as your Savior. I want you to lift up your hand right now. You say, I need to make a commitment to Christ right now. Today is the day that I need to commit to Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord, for a hunger. A hunger for you, God. Lord, we are bound to a citizenship in heaven filled with blessings, filled with promises. And I ask you today in the name of Jesus to heal these broken hearts, to touch our lives. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. I want those of you that raised your hand, I want you to come down to the front. I know we're going to pray for Nancy. She needs a healing in her body. She's going to be having a test done this week. If you need a healing or you need something in your life, I want you to come down to the front. I want to pray for you today. I want Helen and I, we're going to pray for you today. We believe that God is going to do amazing things. Those of you watching, God bless you. You are going to have the best week you've ever had in Jesus' name. I want, if you would, take a seat. Nancy, come on down. If you need prayer.